stories, but we are in we are in overtime in 2024. We're excited to continue into November and December with a focus on marketing. And as always, our advanced training series is free to our members. If you're not a member, check us out at mycollaborativeteam.com. We hope you'll join us and support what we are doing. Over the next few months, we're going to focus, as I said, on marketing. This month, my collaborative team marketing director and coach, Eric Sachs, is going to teach us how to utilize empathy in our marketing. Over the next two months, Eric is going to get us thinking differently about marketing. This month's topic will deal with marketing once you already have a potential client. How do you utilize empathetic marketing to convince that process, pro, that prospect to utilize the collaborative process or any other out of court process? Then next month, he's gonna give us ideas for how we can build a personal brand in the collaborative space. Eric is a collaborative marketing coach and the owner and operator of Saks Multimedia a full-service marketing firm that supports businesses in achieving their marketing goals. Since 2015, Eric has focused on marketing the collaborative process, working with notable organizations such as CFLI, the Miami Practice Group, the Florida Academy of Collaborative Professionals, iCollaborative Team, and IACP. Eric and his team offer a comprehensive suite of services, including collaborative marketing coaching, social media management, website design, and development, email marketing, and more. His hands-on approach ensures tailored marketing strategies that bring each client's vision to life. Eric? Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you, everyone, for being here with us today. I appreciate everyone's support and coming to see what it is that we have to um, learn about. So the basis um, of this presentation is, again, not to provide you with the basic marketing tools that many of you already have and know, such as social media, email marketing, networking, but to help you ensure that the message you convey about yourself and the way you practice can help, can help you better reach the clients you want to reach and help you convert the clients who are reaching out to you to choose a more peaceful process. Empathetic marketing in the collaborative process is vital because it establishes trust, it fosters connections, and positions the collaborative approach as a genuinely supportive alternative for families facing divorce and other disputes. Divorce and family disputes are often emotionally charged and overwhelming. When collaborative professionals approach marketing with empathy, they convey understanding and support, reassuring clients that their fears and concerns will be respected and heard. Empathetic messaging can help clients recognize the long-term benefits of the collaborative solutions, such as preserving family relationships and reducing stress. Empathetic marketing helps potential clients connect with the essence of the collaborative process, peaceful, respectful solutions, by creating an inviting atmosphere that prioritizes the client's emotional and psychological well-being. This trust-centered approach enhances client engagement, builds lasting relationships, and paves the way for successful outcome. This presentation will explore how empathy fosters understanding and cooperation amongst prospective clients to ensure they choose a peaceful process. Empathy is key to building strong, trusting relationships with clients. Empathy in marketing helps connect with clients and potential clients on a deeper level. When it comes to marketing, specifically the collaborative process, the problem is not the ability to have your phones ring and get people to contact you, but rather the inability to convert those phone calls into collaborative processes or out of court processes. Empathetic marketing is not just about bringing new potential clients to your office, but convincing those who are in your office to use the collaborative process. So at this time, um, I want you all to think about and maybe share in the chat, you know, some of the phrases that describes your marketing style. Are you, you know, more focused strictly on business and the services you offer? Do you market yourself as a professional in your preferred style of practice? 
does your marketing convey a message that will attract the clients you want to get? Um, so I'll give you all a minute to kind of think about that, reflect on that. Um, and, you know, throughout this process, throughout this presentation, um, there's going to be a lot of things for you to hopefully think about, reflect on your messaging, how you approach different situations that are going to help you market yourself um, in a more empathetic way. So give another minute. I see we have one in the chat saying that um, from Ed that his marketing is directed at building his reputation in the collaborative world. So again, um, you know, things to think about and write down as we go through the presentation. So considering empathy versus sympathy. Empathy is about understanding and relating to a client's feelings. Sympathy is simply feeling sorry for someone. Empathy involves a deeper emotional connection. Empathy in collaborative practice goes beyond legal solutions by addressing clients' emotional and psychological needs. Sympathy may reinforce a client's feeling of helplessness while empathy empowers. So again, I ask you to just take some time, a moment to think about um, a recent client interaction that you had. Um, and do you think you were empathetic to what they were telling you or were you just providing sympathy? And um, we'll learn more about the difference in empathy and sympathy in the next slide. But um, an example would be if someone gives you a hard situation, you know, you know, I'm, I got kids there, you know, going into their high school years, I don't want to displace them from their friends. And I just don't know what I'm going to do. And your response is, you know, I, I've seen this plenty of times before. And while your situation is hard, um, it's not as hard as what I've seen. So we're definitely going to be able to help get you into a better place. Um, you're not necessarily providing empathy. Um, you're providing sympathy to them. You're, you're not feeling for their specific needs you are relating them to just another process. Um, so at this point here, um, we're gonna get into a quick video um, from Brene Brown, who's a clinical social worker, academic and public speaker. She's gonna share with us her perspective on the difference between empathy and sympathy. So what is empathy and why is it very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection. Sympathy drives disconnection. Empathy, it's very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions where empathy is relevant and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking, the ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize their perspective as their truth. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. <laughs> recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Empathy is feeling with people. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, and climb down. I know what it's like down here. And you're not alone. Sympathy is, ooh, <laughs> it's bad, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, no, you want a sandwich? <laughs> um, empathy is a choice and it's a vulnerable choice because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least. <laughs> I had a, yeah. And we do it all the time. Because you know what? Someone just shared something with us that's incredibly painful, and we're trying to silver lining it. I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. Oh, at least you know you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have a marriage. <laughs> John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult 
conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. I think that last sentence is so important to remember. Rarely can a response and a reactionary response, especially in the, some of the situations you all might find yourself in, makes things better. What makes something better is a genuine connection. So we're going to go through some things that will help you build that connection and you know tie it into how it's going to help you better market the process, again, to those people that are calling you or those people that are already in your office um, looking for answers. So first, obviously, we must start by listening. Listening, instead of trying to dominate an initial consultation or conversation, can help you fully connect between you and the potential client. Listening to their concern, their feel, and their feel, their fears can help build trust and, and help them realize they can reach their goals. Being an empathetic professional and by marketing yourself as an empathetic professional, you can show clients that they will be heard. Listening and providing empathy as opposed to just sympathy, you know, I've seen worst cases or situations, you're going to be fine. Demonstrate that clients are seen as people and not just another divorce case. Techniques such as open-ended questions and validation phrases are going to help you with potential clients and having them recognize that you are listening to them as opposed to just dictate, dictating to them. With that, we must make sure that we are overcoming biases. And I know many of you on the screen today have taken um, bias training and have <clears throat> studied bias amongst team members, bias amongst yourself, you know, bias that you might have against potential clients. I believe my collaborative team as well. Um, we've done some bias presentations, so uh, feel free to check out our YouTube or reach out to um, myself, and I'll be happy to get those to you again if you'd like to rewatch them. You know, we have to be aware of our personal biases, our biases about the way a person looks, acts, thinks, and more, uh, more, well, more than always uh, put a preconceived notion in our head. And to provide a truly empathetic experience, we must remove our bias from the situation. By removing our bias and utilizing an empathetic approach, it allows you to understand why a client might be resisting uh, choosing a peaceful solution or a peaceful process. When we remove our bias and listen to our potential clients' fears and concerns, we can use, professionals can use the knowledge that you have, the confidence and confidence that you have as a professional in the process that you like to utilize to help market the benefit of collaborative or an out of court process versus litigation. You know, techniques to overcome bias to make you a more empathetic marketer and a better listener and help you mold a process to the potential client you're speaking to um, include some self reflection. You know, set aside some time to reflect on your biases that you may have. Um, think about previous cases, you know, or, or previous consultations you had. And, Maybe they said something about a situation that was the first time you've ever heard about that situation and it was so shocking to you and you, you thought, how could you or someone ever get themselves into that situation? And, you know, um, this self-reflection is going to help you learn what kind of triggers you to have bias and help you overcome that bias so that you can um, have a more empathetic approach. When you speak with your clients, fully focus on their words and their emotions, avoid assumptions based on, again, their appearance, maybe how they're talking, that initial phone call, you know, when they're calling you, maybe, you know, it sounds like they're rushed. They're not too into what you're saying. You know, something came up with their kids in the background. You know, it's easy to, again, have a preconceived notion um, when we're talking to people, especially when we're talking to them for the very first time. You know, remember to pause any judgments when you're listening. Allow clients to share their fears and concern without imposing any interpretation based on bias. Cognitive empathy involves understanding a client's thoughts and emotions. Cognitive empathy is essential for connecting with clients in marketing um, your process or marketing your uh, practice. 
Cognitive empathy is the ability to understand and perceive another person's feelings and see their perspective. If professionals can understand the feelings and perspective of a potential client, once again, this is where you have to rely on your expertise as a professional to explain the process that you know is best for that client or potential client that's coming to you and, and market the benefits of collaboration versus litigation. You know, a lot of this is utilizing the training and skills you all have as collaborative professionals to um, get a message across that really shows that because sometimes it can be difficult for people to take that in, especially in the first phone call. They're worried about their problems. They're worried about how they're going to get through the situation. Uh, you guys know better than I do the fears and concerns that clients come into your office with. So it's important that we are able to recognize those because again, every situation is going to be different. Every process, no two processes are alike. And so the more we listen in that first uh, consultation or phone call, the more that we can have an empathetic approach to how we're going to market the process, again, that you want to dictate to them to um, utilize. So one way to help you ensure that you're getting everything that you need out of an initial consultation um, to utilizing this empathetic approach is an empathy map. Empathy mapping can provide short-term and long-term marketing benefits. Uh, remember that there's a marketing need to get potential clients that are calling you to choose the collaborative process, as well as the long-term benefit of your peers and the, the general public understanding that you're, you're, you have an empathetic approach. And the way that you're going to practice is going to be with empathy and not going to be with, you know, okay of sympathy or seeing someone else as just another case. So the empathy map is a tool for structuring a marketing message by focusing on what your client says, says, thinks, feels, and does regarding divorce. And we'll run more uh, through that here over the next few slides. Empathy mapping can help create solutions that address a potential client's specific concerns. So we talked a lot about listening and how do you listen you listen by asking questions. And so we must structure our questions in a way that will help you listen to the, cl the clients, to the way your client potentially feels, thinks, and what they're saying. Remember, ask questions, because asking questions is going to help you fill out this map. When you ask questions, you learn what clients' goals are. So the questions you ask your clients are important. When you you are having your initial consultation, you should be able to fill out this empathy map when you're done. Questions you have to keep in mind when you, you're going through your initial consultation and wanting to fill out this empathy map is, what does your client say about the divorce process in general? Not necessarily their process, but maybe what are um, they being told and therefore saying about what the divorce process might look like? What are they thinking um, about the process or their process? Um, what does the client want to do or have as the outcome of their process? And what do they feel about their situation and the divorce process? And you can use, you know, any questions structured in any way that you want to. But those are the four key things that you want to make sure you're understanding. In, in my opinion, um, most of the time before you even talk process, because, again, you all, a lot of you know me and you know that I sit in on a lot of presentations and I go to a lot of meetings across the country. And, and I don't believe that many people are having trouble with their phones ringing. They're able to get work, but they're not able to get the work that they necessarily want. And my hope and, and the goal of this tool is to help you better get and market yourself in a way to get those clients that are calling you to choose a peaceful option and to choose the collaborative process because um, you're going to be able to guide them with your expertise. Um, so the empathy map can be used to create outreach strategies that resonate with common client emotions. Utilizing this tool, it encourages you to step inside the client's shoes. Consider what they see, what they hear, what they feel, and what they think about their situation. This is going to help you uncover why they might resist choosing a peaceful solution. Ask the clients to share their share their stories and experiences in their own words, which can broaden your perspective and, again, reduce the bias that you might have. 
you know, listening to their, their, their tone, listening to their inflection, listening to how they talk about certain things. That's going to help you, again, step into their shoes. And so as we go through the empathy map, I just want you all to think about, you know, an initial com consultation or a potential client interaction that you had and ask yourself, did you do enough in that initial converse conversation to get what you needed to fill out, you know, an empathy map and, and truly provide an empathetic approach um, and environment to that person that you were speaking with? So again, the first quadrant of our empathy map um, is going to be to find out what your potential client is saying about the divorce process. Now, this can be preconceived notions. Um, it can be a long, you know, maybe they have a long process. If you want to share some in the chat of, of what potential clients have said to you about the divorce process, not specifically their situation, but, you know, they're, they're scared that they're not going to be able to speak to their spouse in a respectful way for the next nine months to a year while they're going through this and maybe beyond. Um, you know, they're scared that all they've heard is that their friends have gone through contentious processes and they don't want to do that. Or maybe, you know, that is what they want to do, but that's going to help you understanding where their kind of preconceived notions are coming from with the divorce process. The next quadrant is what is your potential client thinking about their divorce process? Again, you know, feel free to share stuff or if not, you know, write this down. Um, I can provide this sample empathy map in um, in the chat here shortly. Um, let me see here, actually, if I have it real quick. So that way you all can uh, follow along and have this if you want to save. I don't have it here on my desktop, but I'll be sure to um, send it out afterwards or drop it in the chat when I'm done with the presentation portion. What Again, what is your potential client thinking about their divorce process? Maybe they're thinking um, that they can't make a decision on their own. They need a judge to help them. They need someone that's going to um, make a decision for them. Maybe they have fears about their future. Maybe they're thinking, I'm ready to just be done with this person. I'm ready to move on. You know, Maybe they're thinking, I'm entitled to to you know x amount and i'm not settling for anything less and i know from you know talking to someone else that i can get this from a judge um and there's no way i'm going to get it without a judge's help so what are they thinking about their specific divorce process our next quadrant here what does the client want to do or have as the outcome of their divorce process so understanding their goals, you know, do they want security for their future, both, you know, financially, emotionally, again, maybe, maybe, the, you know, I'm using, again, a lot of, of more positive outlook goals, but I'm sure you guys see a lot of um, more negative outcomes or goals or hear a lot more emotional um, um, goals that might not be realistic and you all understand that but hearing this in this initial consultation is going to help you again guide them guide um, your prospective client to choose the process that you're going to want them to choose um, so it's important that we understand what we want you what you want their outcome to be um, from that initial uh, consultation and lastly what do they Feel about their situation and the divorce process, you know, and I'm sure a lot of um, our MHPs are focused on this as well. You know, they're fearing, you know, with their future, they have anxiety. Again, maybe they're happy to, to be at this portion of their life and to move on as a, you know, out of the relationship that they're currently in. Um, as you all know, there can be a wide range of feelings that people have when it comes to the divorce process. Um, and so now at this point that we would have you know, a completed empathy map. And, and again, this can be something that you just jot down in notes. You don't have to necessarily do it in a map format. Um, some people might prefer that. Some people might like to list things down at first and then kind of map it out after that. Um, but now that you have your, you know, your completed empathy map, you can utilize, again, your knowledge to tailor a custom marketing and divorce strategy to guide potential clients to utilize the collaborative process as well as refine our current messaging to showcase your empathetic approach. So we can use one, or you can think about, you know, 
previous times or use a handful of empathy maps to see what are some underlying themes that you're seeing and how would you as a practitioner approach that you know answer those questions yourself you know if someone comes to my office and you know i'm seeing a lot of people that have fear about their future i'm seeing a lot of people that are you know happy to move through this process and get to the next portion of your life having this knowledge is going to help you um create an empathetic message for your marketing for potential clients and the clients that are currently com coming to you um, for service. And so how can you provide a more empathetic approach to a client? Um, create client-centered content. Focus on content that speaks directly to the client's concerns, fears, and hopes. Address topics like preserving family relationships post-divorce, creating peaceful futures for your children um, to show that you understand their goals. Um, and again, every every person on this call isn't going to be marketing to the same type of people. You know, you all have different clients. You all have different client bases. You all have different reputations throughout your communities where you probably see a specific type of client on the whole. And so utilizing this empathy map is going to help you create content that is going to help you reach the clients that you're going to want to reach. Um, you know, humanize your brand voice, right? In a compassionate, conversational tone. Try not to use, you know, too much legal jargon. Collaborative process is already a word that, or a phrase, uh, two words that many people don't understand what it means. You know, there's very little meaning behind it to the general public. Aim for language that is supportive and reassuring. Um, you know, clients should feel like they're speaking to a caring professional and not just someone that's there to provide a service. Um, use stories to show understanding, you know, share real or hypothetical situations, you know, that'll illustrate the collaborative process has a positive effect on the families. Um, you know, these these stories can help people feel understood um, and feel like the process is something that's going to be right for them. Um, showcase um, your team's supportive role, you know, highlight the collaborative um, team support that people will get, you know, throughout the process, such as a financial professional, a mental health professional, ally professional, you know, let them understand, you know, cost might be a concern, but it's cheaper for someone that knows numbers or knows how to give proper mental health care to pay them as opposed to a lawyer who's going to have to go out. I'm sure as many of you know, in litigation, they're going to go out and then hire the accountant to do the numbers. And that's just an added bill on top, but it seems like it's it comes in at once because it's, you know, maybe it's the lawyer doing all the billing and then paying out the professionals that they're bringing into their team. Um, so explain how each team member can contribute to reduce stress and guidance for the family, regardless of how, um, you know, dire the situation might seem. Um, develop trust with transparency. Be transparent about how the process works, its <laughs> benefits, the potential outcomes. You know, clients appreciate knowing what to expect. Um, and, and I'm sure a lot of this isn't necessarily new. It's things you learn throughout your collaborative training. Um, but sometimes we forget to apply our collaborative training to our marketing. Um, and we just utilize it for the process, even though it's a great foundation for how we want to market ourselves. Um, focus on outcomes rather than services instead of just listing, you know, I can help you you know, get to from point A to point B, you know, explain the outcome that you can help them get to, you know, what is gonna, what is point A going to look like, you know, and what is point B going to look like? And what are the steps in between going to look like, you know, um, focus on how we're going to get you from here to here and what that specific outcome is going to be. Not that you're just going to be divorced at the end, but, you know, you're going to be divorced. You're going to have a stable future because you and your spouse did a nice job, you know, saving up funds, it sounds like, or, you know, you're going to be able to to get, you know, a place on your own. It might not be the, you know, the the nice mansion you're living in now, but it's going to be a suitable place. And you're going to be comfortable in your future life. And, and we're going to set up a process that's going to help you, you know, regain the life that you want to have. Um, you know, clients feel more connected with end results rather than just giving them procedure. Um, and that can be a, a lot of what people think about, again, when they come into your office is the divorce process is a procedure. It's you know, giving all my information, it's fighting with my ex or, or soon to be ex, it's going to court to have things finalized, it's lots of, you know, meetings, it's lots of subpoenas and hearings and back and forth, um, you know, give them that transparency. 
Um, some of you might like to use visuals, you know, visual resources, you know, make sure that your website, your social media reflects, um, you know, hope and peace rather than just legal formality. Um, I think a lot of you probably are, are focused on that, but if not, it's always a great reminder to go back and, and ensure that your messaging and, and your focus is on providing peaceful um, outcomes. And if, if you're um, feeling like, oh, well, I see my website all the time, ask a friend who, you know, has little knowledge of what it is you actually do and ask them to go to your website and, and have them be brutally honest with what your website conveys. Is it too legally? Is it, you know, too strong or does it give that calm, you know, empathetic environment that is going to be welcoming to the type of client that you um, want to have and, you know, provide resources, you know, let people know about, you know, your local collaborative practice website or um, MCT's website. Let them know that there are resources out there for them to go and learn more and get educated on, you know, the outcomes that they can have through this process. Uh, and I see we have a hand up, Ed. Yeah. You know, the, to me, the key to that, the, what I like about this empathy mapping is it not only helps you understand the client who's before you, but, you know, after you build up a number of these, it it eventually begins to tell you who your client base is, who your target market is. We were we were just on a, a, a an FACP committee meeting in which the people from California were presenting about um, force options. And Beth, you know, somebody asked Beth Proudfoot, who was one of the presenters, well, who do you who do y'all market divorce options to? And her, I thought her response was so spot on. She says, well, that depends. She said, my client, I, she says, I've learned that my client base, as she put them into a box, was are soccer moms. She said, so I market to soccer moms. I've learned that those are the people that come to me. She said, other people, high net worth people you know they get a lot of high net worth people well you're going to market to them differently because with beth she goes to um mental health professionals who refer soccer moms to her but if you're looking for high net clients then you want to go to the financial advisors that these people are going to or their their estate or 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 um um business attorney. So this empathy mapping not only helps us with that individual client in front of us, but it really helps to guide our overall marketing plan, it seems to me. Absolutely. And even with, you know, clients that come into your office that might not choose to utilize your service, you can, you know, utilize your empathy map and think back to, you know, the approach you took and, and why maybe it didn't work. And it's obviously, it's not always going to be, you know, our fault is the professional people make decisions and maybe you're just part of a different interview, you know, multiple interviews to find a, a potential, um, you know, provider and they just had a different connection with someone. So, um, you know, it can definitely be useful in trying to build a long-term message as well as with those clients that are um, coming into your office currently. And so, I know a lot of people might start their initial consultation by talking process. Uh, but for me, you know, I encourage you before you talk process options, consider filling out an empathy map during your initial consultation to help you mold the process that is right for each individual client. Because again, as you know, uh, better than I do, each case and each collaborative matter is different than um, the last. Um, empathy helps create trust. Many of our, your potential clients do not have the answers to the questions that they're looking for. So when they come and seek your professional help and expertise with divorce, they want to know they're getting truthful answers. They want to know that they're talking to someone that can be trusted. By marketing yourself and practicing as an empathetic professional, you can build a sense of trust and understanding with every single person that comes into your office. So at this time, um, I'd like everyone to you know, write down um, to yourself um, to develop a, a one um, statement that you could use with a client to convey empathy and build trust effectively. Just kind of that elevator pitch of uh, that kind of sums up who you are as a professional. And of course, this might be a little bit different for every client because every client's, you know, not the same, but you know, what would be kind of the generic starting point? So I, I took some time and did this for myself. So, um, you know, for those of you that don't know me, you know, 
I'm Eric Sachs, and I've been a collaborative marketing coach and and collaborative and helping collaborative professionals market their practice for about the last ten years now. You know, I understand that marketing can feel overwhelming, um, and you may be carrying a lot of of worry or stress about other aspects of your business. My role is to support you every step of the way, helping you find solutions and strategies that'll help you reach your goals. Together, we'll work to create a plan that gives you hope and support as we move forward in developing your brand. So hopefully that statement, and if you work on your own um, kind of one statement, empathetic elevator pitch, um, you know, it's going to help you come across in that first interaction, that first sentence, you know, that you're a different type of professional than what people might think of divorce professionals. So what can you do today? Um, I First thing, you know, is identify what challenges you from a marketing perspective. Um, is it a lack of time? Is it, you know, you don't have the funds in your practice right now to dedicate to marketing? Um, and, or is it, you know, you're not someone that can create content. Um, do you struggle to find the right messaging? Do you just feel like you don't have any, um, sort of experience in marketing? So you're not sure where to start. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I see there is a question to, um, in the chat that I'll go back to from Mark who said, um, he's curious to see how we might change our messaging to a soccer mom as opposed to a high net worth client. So that's a great example because to me, that's kind of two opposite spectrums of the clients that you might see, you know, a soccer mom. And of course, I'm generalizing and using some bias based off of a two word description of someone. A soccer mom might be someone that doesn't have a nine to five or isn't working um, as frequently as someone who is a high net worth client. Um, you know, of course, there are high net worth clients that might not work at all. They're self, you know, they've already made their money and they're just living uh, to, to spend that money. Um, but if we're talking to a soccer mom, they're going to have different feelings about the divorce process. They're going to have different things to say about the outcome of the process. They're going to have talked to a different circle of people who are telling her or she's using as guidance or are shadow people as um, many people like to refer to in the collaborative process that have given her a preconceived notion. So your message to her is going to be a lot different than the person that is the high net worth client that maybe they're going to have to be the one paying out, you know, alimony or child support. And they're going to have a lot of different concerns as it relates to, to the divorce process. Um, than the soccer mom might. And so filling out this empathy map is going to help you again in that initial consultation. You know, look, maybe the high net worth earner um, doesn't want to deal with the kids as often. And so that's not as concern to them. And and they just, that's just not, they, you know, they'll see the kids when they see the kids, though, maybe they'll be around for holidays, but, you know, and the soccer mom wants the kids all the time. She wants to be able to go to all the soccer practices, or maybe she's ready to get a break from all of that. Um, having an empathy map is is going to help you hit on key points and say, well, you know, if you're worried about your kids and we go to a judge, you know, they're not going to necessarily care about this or this. They're going to try to follow the law. If we use an out of court process, we're going to be able to tailor this directly to how you feel about the kids. Or if it's the high net worth client, you know, they're worried about alimony. Well, you know, maybe we can lower that by giving up concessions here and it'll equal out. And, you know, maybe you'll give a little bit more in, in the start, but in the long run, you're going to be saving some or it's going to be a better outcome for you. You're going to be able to build that money back up. And in a court, again, you know. Um, I'm not the expert. I'm not the financial expert, but there's more guidelines that have to be followed. You all understand that the collaborative process allows you to mold a process that's specific to your clients. So why not have a molded marketing message that's specific to your clients? And in my view, this empathy map can really help us get there. Um, so I hope that helps kind of give a description to how you might market differently to a soccer mom or to a, a, a high net worth client. and why it's so important to have this understanding of what they say, what they, they feel, what they want to have be the outcome and, you know, what they might be thinking. 
Um, Eric, her point, her point also was it, at, at who you advertise or you market to. Um, she talked about the fact that her best sources re, uh, for referral were MHPs. Well, you can get soccer moms because they go to MHPs. High net worth people don't like to go to MHPs. They'd rather be with their financial advisor or their business attorney. So it's also not changing your message, but directing who you deliver the message to. That was part of her point. Thank you for that. Um, and so back to some of the things that we can do today. Uh, we talked about identifying some of your challenges that are preventing you from, you know, properly marketing or marketing the way that you feel might be best for you. Um, you know, understand your clients, your potential client pain points. You know, if like we just talked about, if you know you're seeing a, a specific type of client on, a, uh, you know, at a majority of the time. You know, you can market yourself to that client and address the the concerns that they might have or the feelings that might they might have within your marketing. You know, literally say, hey, are you a soccer mom that that is concerned about what, you know, the future with your children is going to be looking like because you're in divorce? And, and, you know, obviously some more, you know, the working on the messaging is a very big part of what, um, you know, this presentation is about. But you can tailor that message specifically to that person as opposed to just putting out something generic or something that might resonate more with that high net worth client. You can have messaging for both different types of clients. Um, if you find that you're fine, you have, you know, a couple different um, client bases, um, create an empathetic environment in storytelling, use previous situations to help relate, not overshadow or sympathize, with what your potential clients may be going through. So again, not, you know, I've seen this before, I've seen worse, you'll be fine. I've seen this before, we've helped families get through this and I understand that it's gonna be difficult. I understand the emotions that you're gonna have, but with the help of a mental health professional, you're gonna be okay and we're gonna be able to get you to the other side. Um, and using that relatability is gonna help you kind of build that empathetic approach and environment. Um, you know, back to, again, the more basic marketing strategies, make sure that your website, your social media, your marketing material. And again, um, I asked you to work on it here for a second. You're in person conversating with, you know, public and professional. Make sure that you're giving across the message that you want to give off. That's going to attract the clients that you want to attract, because, again, you can market yourself as a peaceful divorce professional and get calls from all types of people. But if you want to get calls from specific type of people, you have to speak directly to those people um, and give them a message um, that they are going to want to hear. Um, and so, you know, a little self-assessment, um, you know, take some time to look at your website, your social media pages. And again, look at it from a client, a potential client's perspective. Um, are you conveying empathy, understanding, support, um, and the message that you want to convey. And I encourage you again, maybe utilize a friend. Um, maybe you have, you know, a teenage child or you have a family member with a teenage child or, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe you want to uh, get someone that's a little bit older um, because that's your client base. Get someone that doesn't necessarily know about what you do and have them look at your website, provide you honest feedback, you know, do it with them or have them do it on their own, whatever's going to make them make, you know, you get the best results. Um, it's a great way to assess what you're putting out there without kind of the preconceived notions or biases that we have about ourselves. Um, and if you find that you need it, you know, um, hire a professional like myself. We can, a, a collaborative marketing professional, um, a collaborative marketing coach can help you personalize a marketing strategy that's right for you. Um, we can help you set goals and make sure you're staying on track to reach those goals. Um, we can help with brand development, the accountability and support that you need. If you find that time is tough and you need someone that kind of pushes you along, um, you know, we utilize all sorts of professionals and coaches in within the collaborative process. And we use, you know, the team members that we have available to us. So why not utilize that for our own marketing? Um, you know, go to networking opportunities, use that in-person messaging that you work on um, to grow as many direct client connections as possible um, and set long term growth goals. Make sure that, you know, if your long term goal is to have a fully out of court collaborative practice, make sure every six months, every quarter you're checking in on your marketing. 
um, you know, make sure that your messaging um, hasn't changed. You know, I see a lot of people on their websites that, you know, they build a website and they're starting out a collaborative practice and they're offering services that they think they still need to offer. And then all of a sudden they aren't even offering those services anymore, but those services are still advertised on their website. Um, that may be services that don't convey a fully out of court or um, collaborative practice. Those are the things that need to be addressed because, you know, someone might see um, something on your website that just doesn't resonate with them. Um, a marketing professional and, and one that is skilled in empathy um, and the collaborative process can help develop brand trust, establish accountability, and ensure alignment with collaborative values. Um, and additionally to that, um, we have one more slide to go, but before we get there, I want to let everyone know um, that we're going to be doing more of these marketing trainings throughout the year. We're going to have one um, next month on brand yeah, development, off personal, personal brand development um, and, and professional brand development. Um, and then in the start of 2025, we're going to be holding an eight hour um, training on collaborative marketing. Um, it's going to be over the course of four weeks, two hours each um, each session, uh, one session a week. We'll have more details about that and exact dates coming up here um, in the next week or so. Oh, I missed a slide. I was too busy, um, too busy going on about how a professional can help. So you can all kind of see here is sort of the, the track that a professional uh, collaborative uh, marketing professional can help you um, get on. When marketing, it's important to remember that everyone has a different target audience, something we've talked about throughout this presentation. So wh where you market your practice and service depends, but the message that we use in our marketing can be consistent from an empathetic approach no matter if you're talking to that high net worth client or you're talking to the soccer mom, that core message, that empathetic message should be the basis and can be the consistent basis for how you wanna market yourself. Empathy is an essential tool in marketing for collaborative professionals. It fosters deep connections, helping clients feel understood and supported. By marketing with empathy, you build trust and guide, guide clients towards peaceful resolutions. Empathy and marketing, not only promotes client connection, but it also underscores the core principles of the collaborative practice. Remember, provide empathy, not sympathy. I appreciate everyone for joining us today, and I hope um, you all found something. And if you have any questions or comments, now um, will be the time for all of that. And I see Mark. Mark I think your point that you, yeah. That's yeah, just made it's so I was, true. Yeah, I, I was um, talking with what? Becky Fisher, who's on this call, um, who has um, recently taken on some some new collaborative matters, and just talking about that and the amount of people that she referred. You know, every collaborative matter that you take on, it's not only a collaborative matter, but it's a marketing opportunity. It's a chance for you to, you know, it's easy to just say, "Hey, let's use the same team," but you know, maybe you say, hey, let's use the same neutral professionals, but I'm going to bring in a collaborative lawyer, or reach out to a couple of different collaborative lawyers that I've never worked to. Or I want to, you know, use one new professional in every case because that's going to help grow your networking opportunities. And through that, if people understand and get to learn you and your empathetic approach, you know, Irene's going to say, oh, wow, Mark, I really loved his empathetic approach. You know, I know who he is, but I've never worked with him before and I just didn't know how he practiced. Um, and I'm going to want to refer him now. I'm going to add him to my book of potential referral sources. And that's marketing. That's networking. Um, so the empathetic approach um, to me and how we message, how we, we um, build our messaging is just so vital because it's so easy to say, yeah, do social media, do pay-per-click advertising, and all that stuff that I think people understand. Um, it's about how we come across in all of that. You know, something that we also just learned from the California people through their divorce option program that I thought was extremely interesting. We asked, how do you populate these events, the, the divorce option presentations? And they said that the largest population that their practice group has an, a, a, a policy of a, a highly recommended, as she put the words, I think, um, um, policy 
that every attorney, everybody in their practice group, when they have a potential client, they send them to divorce, the next divorce options presentation. They actually use those presentations. That kind of falls on what Mark was saying, that it's, it's, it's like village marketing. Okay, uh, you don't have to do your own marketing here with a program like divorce options in, that California has. Oh, it looks like we process. Lost or, oh, there you are. You're back. You froze for a moment. Okay, or you know, it the, the process helps get the other side. You know, through those types of things, use use your team. Rhonda and I always talk about. You know, the idea that send them to your neutrals. Um, I, I just heard Adam Cordover present in California this past week, um, and he talked about the same thing. It, it, use the team to sell the process. And with that, an empathy map and this tool can help you pick, pick the best neutrals and professionals for each individual matter that you're dealing with, because you'll know, hey, I have an MHP that's great with kids or I have an MHP that's great with, you know, elder couples um, as opposed to just going back to, you know, the same old professionals that you utilize. Anybody else have a question? Anne Marie, I totally agree with your comment that we, sometimes we get too busy and we need to get back to these basics. We need to remember what it is we need to do. Um, you know, we are always going to, courses to better our collaborative um, skills. Uh, we need to do the same with our marketing skills too. Anybody else? Eric, thank you very much. This was a great presentation, gave us lots to think about. Uh, we haven't set a date yet, but next month, keep your eyes open. Um, the second part of Eric's presentation, um, how to build a brand for yourself within the collaborative world will be in December and watch for information about the um, eight hour course that Eric will be presenting. Again, thank you all very much. We hope to see you tomorrow on happy hour, 430 Eastern. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all.